All right, big news today from the corporate world with the CEO of Woolworths, Brad Banducci, stepping down after eight years in the top job. The move, of course, coinciding with the retailer announcing a half-year net loss of $781 million and that train wreck of an interview on the ABC Four Corners program earlier this week. So Sorry, the former head of the Competition Commission says... You... His words are that Retired, we have... by the way. I, I shouldn't have said that, Angus. Are, you, are we going to leave it in there if we are? Well, I mean, if, if we're on the record. You said it. I mean, you know, let's let's move on. But, yeah. Yeah, no, um, I'm, I think I'm done, guys. Uh, you know, I, I, I do this with good intent. You know, I don't do this with bad intent. Uh, You're walking out, really? For more on this, let's bring in the man with his finger on the pulse of corporate Australia, Sky News business editor Ross Greenwood. Well, Ross, Woolley's quick to point out, of course, he's retiring... They say they've been on the hunt for a new CEO for some time, but it, it looks pretty bad for Banducci today. Yeah, it really does. I mean, let's be honest, he was under investigation there by Four Corners and by really the Australian Parliament as well over supermarket pricing in this country. Uh, there's uh, a number of inquiries going on right now, not the least of being won by the ACCC, the Competition Commission. Um, and, and this really goes to the heart of inflation, the cost of living that people are having to put up with. And if you consider that Banducci is the head of a company that has, you know, something of the order of $34 billion of worth of sales in the past six months, Months, has 200,000 employees. I mean, that was a pretty easy one, to be honest, to, to be able to get through. He knows well enough how the media works. Um, he really shouldn't have taken that interview, re the truth be known. And my sense is he knew he was on the way out. Um, and I, I get, the, get a sense that a bit of frustration got the better of him there. There's no doubt about that. Um, Brad Banducci is, has been a good operator uh, for Woolworths, but the effectiveness of a good leader is their communication skills in tough times. Um, and that is certainly a significant lapse uh, from Banducci there when he uh, really did address Four Corners. But go to the heart of this, probably there was already a transition to the new chief executive anyway. He didn't help himself, uh, though, with Australia Day. I mean, I was a supporter of Woolies. It was my favourite of the big supermarkets. I haven't walked in the door since that whole fiasco over Australia Day. Yeah, and, and I won't be alone there. I think a lot of Australians uh, think like that. That was, that was my exact point, is I think a lot of Australians do get that. And remember, it is a very fine line as to whether you shop, you know, with, uh, with Coles or Woolworths or whether you go to Aldi, which has been able to come into Australia and pick up, you know, close on 20% of the market share here in Australia in a relatively short space of time, which goes to show also that shoppers are all about value. That is what they're really all about. Mm. And that's what these investigations are all about, is, you know, people were concerned at the start of this year when, unfortunately, taking the advice of the Weather Bureau and think there was an El Nino effect about to arrive, dropped a whole lot of cattle and stock onto the market. Meat prices at a wholesale level collapsed and yet there was a growing suspicion that that really wasn't being passed on with any earnestness at our big supermarket chains and that's prompted some of these inquiries which Brad Banditchi will have to go in front and which, to be honest, he's fronted in the past. So he will leave, if you like, a, a clean trail for the next chief executive coming in uh, and that in many ways is the hallmark of a, an outgoing chief executive doing their job. All right, another thing I want to talk to you about, Daniel Wilde from the Institute of Public Affairs. We spoke last week. We talked about businesses fleeing from Victoria thanks to a catastrophic failure of the state energy policies. Well, the Assistant Treasurer in Victoria says that's not true. We might have a, a grab there. Let's have a listen. We're going gangbusters as an economy. I mean, if you look at it, uh, state of the state, we're flying along. Uh, the economy's really strong uh, and we're the engine room of the uh, national economy. Well, the way I look at it, Ross, uh, if you think Victoria's going gangbusters, you're in the wrong state because what's really holding up the economy in Victoria is rapid and constant migration. It's not businesses coming to Victoria, it's just people literally off planes. It's certainly not government policy that's bringing uh, people and businesses to, to Victoria. And the reality is that the rate of failure of businesses in Victoria is higher than at any other part of the country. Um, now, you know, this is simply not necessarily just because of energy prices, but it's also the impost that the government is placing on those businesses. It's extra payroll tax. It's new land taxes, which are going through the roof. Anybody who's picked up a, a land tax bill in Victoria recently uh, just understands 
that's just how significant that is. And so as a result of this, you just even go here, new business starts. This is ABS data. This is what the IPA put out. Just goes to show the heart of where businesses are opening in Australia and where they're not wanting to open. And so, you know, in many ways, the Victorian government has got to get its energy policy right. It's got to get its tax policy right. Because do understand that the state needs those businesses to be there paying taxes because the $170 billion worth of debt that did start out at $20 billion when Dan Andrews came to power, mm. but over the next five years goes to $170 billion is really going to be debilitating for services in that state over the next decade. And, of course, Ross, it's, it's the national economy's second most populous state. Victoria's got to pull its weight. Uh, it has to pull its weight because the national economy needs the jobs in Victoria. It needs really a vibrant economy there. So what it needs is not more taxes and more, you know, shall I say, impediments to open up a business. It needs to get rid of those impediments. It needs to allow business to thrive and prosper and to be an open economy for them. Mm. It doesn't want disincentives, you know, because business is walking away from Victoria right now, just as it's walking away from Queensland. BHP is one that said it will not invest another dollar in Queensland while it has its current settings. So states have to understand that they have an obligation if they're wanting to get investment into their states and they want to create the jobs for the, for the people who live there. Terrific analysis as always, Ross. Thanks for your time.